Hey, this is Bruce from Awesome Arcades. So I'm going to add a few edits to a setup video that I made. So this video is gonna show you how to set up the 412 board, uh, which is compatible on the cocktail and classic cocktail. And so rather than shoot a new video, I'm actually just gonna take a video of this video and then I'm gonna add in the changes that I wanna make uh, just orally and uh, we'll take it from there. So let's start with just how to plug the game board in. Arcades, so here's Amazon. That is the 412 game board. It's 99 bucks. This is what it looks like in person. So you can see it's that guy. They kind of look like uh, like a Nintendo cartridge. You ever remember you had to kind of blow down inside the cartridge before you stuck it in the console. Uh, different Jamba boards have different cases. Some might be yellow or light blue, but they all have these things. They're called fingers or teeth. So you see that little notch there? Inside your machine, you're going to see something that looks like this. This is called the harness. So you see that little black line? You're gonna match that up with that black notch, or excuse me, that uh, that notch right there. And so this is a female part. This is a male part. Take that. That's how you plug it in. And then there's a monitor cable inside the cabinet. And that's how you plug a board in. So let me just show you on an actual cabinet. I happen to have one sitting here. So when you get it, the lid just opens up. It's on hinges like a car hood. Inside, there's this guy here. One quick bit of uh, advice I want to give you. So on the lid, when you have it open, there are hinges. Now, this is an ultimate cocktail, so the hinges on this one are different. But on your machine, when you go to close the lid, be careful. Do not force it down. These little hinges bend on like an L bracket. You just need to slowly or gently guide them, and they'll kind of pop up, and then the lid will come down. I've had people unfortunately kind of force it down and then they'll bend out and then they're they're ruined, which is fine, I'll send you new ones. But instead of doing that, just make sure that you uh, help the brackets along by guiding them to close the lid. All right, let's continue. Remember the black line, remember the notch. And then you've got the monitor cable. Okay, so that's how you plug it in. I'm also gonna show you how on the side of your board, right next to your monitor, there is, uh, excuse me, inside there's gonna be a little black thing like this. This is your trackball cable. On the side of the board, right where the monitor plugs in, there is a trackball port. I'll show you what that looks like now. All right, here's where I show you how to do the trackball. If you got trackballs, inside you're gonna see this, this little black thing. Notice there's a notch on the top. And then on the board itself here, you don't notice this, that's where the black ball, the trackball thing would plug in. One thing I just wanna point out, those two little switches right there, those are called dip switches. They need to be in that position. So the first one needs to be down, the second one needs to be up. Those dip switches are for adjusting the board to accept different types of monitors. We won't get into that too much, but for your purposes, you need the first switch in the down position, the second switch in the up position. They're like light switches. They could just go up and down. In fact, you wanna see, this is a different board, but these are what those switches look like. They're just little switches. Now on the 412 board, there's only two, and it's gonna be one down and two up, just like is shown in the video. It's basically for the difference between a cathode ray tube, like an 80s TV, a CRT, monitor or a modern led monitor which is what we have here so so basically you're just going to take that with the notch on the top and that's going to go right down into that so the vga cable goes if you ever plug in a computer monitor you know what that is that's it the other thing you need to pay attention to is this little button that's the setup button so when you get the machine oh and by the way if you're going to move the cabinet around Lift it from this, the control panel. Don't lift it from the lid because the lid is just held down by two brackets. So this is a game that I'm building, so it's not fully prepped. That's why the tape's on there. Uh, but when you get the machine, there's going to be a power cord and two keys. First thing you're going to do, go ahead and plug the machine in. Don't turn it on yet. Using the key, open this coin door on the front. Reach your hand in the cabinet, up and back toward yourself. There's two little latches here. That is what they look like. And so the lid has these two little locking devices. When you go to close the lid, well, I guess I covered that. Don't just force that down. Those will blow out. So guide those on both sides. And that thing will kind of gently close down. 
Inside, you can see that I've already got this thing plugged in. So there's the harness it's been plugged into the board. There's the VGA cable. This machine does not have track balls. And so what I would like you to do is plug it in. And remember to plug it in, as I mentioned, don't plug this thing in backwards. All right, we got that. Once you get it plugged in, go ahead and get ready to turn it on. But before you turn it on, I want you to locate that little black button that I told you about. It's right next to where the VGA cable plugs in. Down here. It's right next when to, the, you turn to those the switches. On, on the screen. Sorry, the button is uh, right next to the dip switches. So, and this part's important. This is the instructions how to enter setup. Over here, it's right next to where the VGA cable plugs in. Down here, when you turn the machine on, on the screen over here, and I'll show you this, it's gonna flash, it's gonna say game elf, and then it's gonna say press test button to enter setup. While the screen says that, you're gonna push that button. So it's a little hard for me to do this and film, but basically I'm gonna turn it on. It's actually already on here, so I'm gonna turn it off. I should just point out that the on off switch is located on the back of the cabinet, right where the power cord plugs in. So actually it's back here. Um, so right where it plugs in underneath the plug, that's the on off switch. Okay. I'm going to turn it on and then I'm going to run over here. I'm going to get my finger on that button. Let me just kind of show you what the screen looks like. So the first thing you're going to see is that it says game elf, this reflection, but you get the idea here. When it says that, press that button. Now here's the key guys. You have to push the button while those words are on the screen. If the game loads up, so if all of a sudden you're looking down at the screen and you see Miss Pac-Man or a list of games to choose from, you miss the window. And so again, turn the machine on. The first thing you're gonna see is like some elf characters. Then you're gonna see the words, press test button to enter setup. While those words are on the screen, you have to push the button while they're on the screen. And then count to 10, go ahead and close the lid. Again, guide these down. So like that, like that, close the lid back down and you'll now notice that you're in the setup mode. All right, so I'm gonna take over here. So I've got this cabinet loaded up and we are in the setup screen. And so again, we plugged it in, we turned it on. We found the little button right next to the dip switches between where the monitor plugs in and the switches. There's only one little black button on the board press test button to enter setup. Go ahead and push that button. And then we're gonna come in here. Now, the one player side for this cabinet is the side with the start buttons, okay? Now you'll notice that this is upside down. That is not optimal. So if you're standing at the one player side and you notice that the screen is upside down, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to come down here to number nine and it says, select the item and press the one player start button to enter. Well, just so you know, this is the one player start button. It's white, it's got one man. This is your two player start button. And then these buttons are A, B, and C. Or alternatively, you could call them S1, S2, and S3. A, B, C, or S1, S2, S3. I, I tell you that they're S1, S2, S3 because in some boards, uh, they don't use ABC, they use S1, S2, S3, so you don't get confused, but okay. So to select the item, we're gonna use the one player start button. So we're on our joystick and we're gonna see what down does. Okay, so it looks like down is taking us down. We wanna go down to number nine, flip screen. Once we're there, we're gonna press the one player start button. Okay, and now it's gonna display the correct way. So again, you wanna have the start buttons with the orientation facing you. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and my, uh, excuse me, sorry, there's a, a glare overhead. You wanna come to coin settings, number seven. So go down to number seven. Right here, I'm showing you how to set it to free play. If you don't have it on free play, you either have to use a coin or on the front of the cabinet, there is a, I don't have a flashlight. If you open the coin door, there's a little switch inside that you could tap to add credits. It simulates adding a coin. Um, so you could either add credits by hitting that switch or dropping quarters at it, or you could set it on free play. And that's what this is gonna show you. So we come down here to coin settings. Again, 
one player start to enter. So we're on seven in coin settings. We're going to hit the one player start button here. Okay, so coin mode, that's the first option. This tells you one coin, one credit. You can do one coin, two credits, one coin, three credits, two coins, one credit. There's a whole bunch of choices. We don't care about any of those unless you want to change that um, to make it so it takes four quarters to play or something like that. But we want to come down here to free play. So we're going to come down here to free play. Now, my board's already been set up, so it's on free, free play, but yours is going to be defaulted. That's going to say no there. So when you come down here to free play, it's going to say no. You want it to say yes. So we come down here and it says the C button, one player C. That just means this side. This is the one player side. That's the two player side. One player C to change. Let me get away from that light. Uh, one player start to save. One player A to quit and go back. So we want to change it. So we're going to do C again, A, B, C. So we're on free play. And you can see now that that toggles back and forth between yes and no. Once you're on yes, we want to make sure we save that change. So we press the one player start button to save. Saving done, press one player A to continue. Okay, one player A. Now the last change that we want to make, I, I believe your board is going to be defaulted on upright. What upright means, if you choose upright mode, it's not going to flip back and forth. It would be it would think that it's on a cabinet like this and so if it were to flip upside down it would be upside down so you don't want it on upright you want it on cocktail mode so we're going to come up here to cabinet type and if it says cocktail default you're good to go and you'll know you're good to go if you choose the game frogger and it flips for the opposing player if you choose two players if you're trying to do a two-player game now just so you know not every game flips most of the games flip Donkey Kong, uh, is it Donkey Kong? I know Pac-Man, Galaga. Um, there are some games that only use the one player side. For example, games like Centipede, Millipede, those games were not originally designed to be played in a cocktail, just a stand up. So they don't have that software function where they can flip. But anyway, if it says upright default, you wanna come down here and put it on cocktail default. And then to go ahead and change that, you're gonna again, do the one player start to enter under my cabinet type default, and then it says, sure to load cocktail default configurations plus one player start to confirm. Yes. Okay, and now this thing is gonna reset. The reason I had us do that option last is because it's gonna take you out of the setup screen and then just boot the game up now. So, <clears throat> but if you changed it, uh, if you flipped the orientation, if that was necessary, and then you set it on free play, which is what you wanted to do, uh, setting it up on cocktail mode should be the last thing because you don't really need to do anything else and so again you would press the button right there while that's on the screen is when you push the button just sometimes i get people that they just they they keep uh missing the window and they're they're wondering why they can't get into setup but they're actually pushing it after that is off the screen okay so here we are in the menu screen and i don't know how much you're familiar with this i've got other videos that have covered it but if you press down, you can scroll rapid. If you press right, you can actually rapid scroll one page at a time. So I know there's 400 games, but as you can see, you can get from game one all the way to the end very, very quickly. The other thing I sh should mention is that if you want to play two players, you do not choose two players from the menu screen. You have to get into the game first. Once you're in the game, then you can choose two players. And so I should just say, if you come down here and it says insert coin or, or something about coin, you didn't save it and it's not free. You'll know it's free play because it'll say free right there. So sometimes I'll get people that say, well, the joysticks aren't responding. If it's in coin operated mode, you can't do anything on it without putting it a credit, either a quarter or hitting, uh, hitting that switch on the coin door. Um, so look at that right there and you'll see if it's on coin operated or free play. But let's go ahead and enter Miss Pac-Man. To enter, I'm pretty sure it's the one player start button. Let's find out. It's been a while. Yeah, so to enter the game, you press the one player start button. When you do that, it takes about 12 seconds to load up. It's gonna go through this kind of uh, screensaver mode. Now, the machine has effectively become Miss Pac-Man once you've done that. If you wanna choose two players, now would be the time to do it. So 
We're gonna choose two players. That is really loud. Let me turn that down. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> that was really loud. Okay, and then let me just uh, kamikaze myself here. And you can see that it flips, okay? So if it doesn't do that, you're not in cocktail mode. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you is to exit out of a game, you're gonna press and hold down the one player start button for about five seconds. When you do that, a window's gonna pop up. It says continue or exit. It's just like control, alt, delete on a computer. The cool thing about this feature is that it does allow you to pause the game. And so you can go back in and pick up where you left off, or you could exit out to the menu screen. And here we are back at the menu screen. Okay, uh, I, I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> I know this isn't the most professional video I've ever made. Uh, I'm in, so I do about 30% of my annual sales in a two week period from Black Friday to about December 10th. And so uh, today is one of the days within that 10 day period. And it's uh, 10 p.m. I'm out in my garage. I've been out here since 5 a.m. So I just, <laughs> I just didn't have time to make a, a better video, but. Uh, you get the gist. Hopefully I covered everything and I'm going to go ahead and upload this now. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to text me 408-649-0410, 408-649-0410. And if you're curious, this is an ultimate cocktail. The ultimate just plays, you know, these kind of games. And then you can actually switch over here and do uh, landscape games, games like Super Mario Brothers and Street Fighter, Defender, things like that. So, Okay. Thanks for watching. Hey, one more thing I almost forgot. Uh, in the deluxe cocktail, so on the front is the coin door. If you stick your hand through, you're gonna see this. This is a stereo amplifier. The top knob that is blinking blue and red, that's normal. The biggest knob is the volume. Uh, then it's bass, treble, and one of them is balance. Bear in mind that the balance doesn't work because these boards are not in stereo. Um, but the top knob is volume. If you have a standard cocktail, there's only one knob inside. There's just volume, and so that one's easy. In addition, there's a volume knob on the side of the board. So if you have the volume on the cabinet turned up and you notice there's still no volume, make sure that you adjust this little knob. So this is the volume. It's not very, it's not marked very well, but you know, left is down, right is volume up. And so again, if you're not getting any sound, be sure to check the knob. Uh, here or the single knob on the classic cocktail and the knob on the board.